Wisdom teeth. Thousands of years ago, our ancestors were chomping on raw roots and half-cooked meat. Their jaws were bigger, tougher, and built for survival. That's where wisdom teeth came in. The third row of molars, way in the back, ready to crush whatever nature served up. Fast forward to today. Our food is soft, our utensils do the heavy lifting, and suddenly, those extra teeth are about as useful as the default compass app on your phone that you've opened maybe once. They show up late, usually between ages 17 and 25, and cause nothing but drama. Impacted teeth, infections, and the infamous extraction videos where teens confess their deepest secrets under anesthesia. The irony? Millions of people don't even grow wisdom teeth anymore, thanks to evolution. So if you still have yours, congrats. You're rocking prehistoric hardware in a modern world. Third eyelid. Next time you look in the mirror, peek at the pinkish fold in the corner of your eye. That's the plica semilunaris, the leftover scraps of a third eyelid. In animals like falcons or cats, the nictitating membrane is a full-on windshield wiper for the eyeball, sliding across sideways to keep things moist and protected while still letting them see. Falcons literally blink mid-200 miles per hour dive, and woodpeckers use theirs right before smashing into a tree. It's nature's built-in safety goggles. Humans? We just got the demo version? The fold doesn't move, doesn't cover your eye, and doesn't really do anything besides maybe help with tear drainage. Evolution basically denied us the full feature set. Lots of different animals have this third eyelid. Your dog, your cat, even polar bears. Ours is just a decorative corner flap. Thanks, evolution. Appendix. Imagine being an ancient human, surviving on plants so tough they'd make kale seem like cotton candy. Back then, the appendix was very important. A pouch filled with helpful bacteria that broke down cellulose, the stiff structural component found in plant cell walls. Think of the appendix as a built-in compost bin, turning chewy greens into fuel. Fast forward to modern humans. That pouch has shrunk to a flimsy finger-like tube dangling off your large intestine. It doesn't help much with digestion anymore, but it does have one modern talent, randomly staging a medical emergency. Appendicitis hits about 1 in 10 people in their lifetime, which is why surgeons joke the appendix's main job is to keep them employed. And yet, evolution might not have fully kicked it to the curb. Some scientists think the appendix acts like backup storage for good gut bacteria, replacing those guys in your intestines after nasty infections. Not essential, but kind of neat, until it decides to blow up your weekend plans. Tonsils. Open your mouth wide in the mirror and look way in the back of your throat. Those lumpy bits on either side? That's your palatine tonsils, little immune outposts stationed right at the front gates of your airway. In kids, they're like the first line of defense, spotting germs early and kicking off an immune response. Specialized cells inside tonsils help your body learn what's dangerous and build up memory for future defenses. But here's the twist. You can lose them and still be totally fine. Other tissues with immune functions can pick up the slack, like adenoids and lymph nodes. That's why millions of kids had their tonsils removed in the mid-1900s for chronic infections. It got so common, it was practically a school tradition. By adulthood, tonsils shrink and their immune role fades, which leaves many scientists wondering, are they actually needed or just throat clutter? Tailbone. Once upon a time, your ancestors actually had tails. Not TikTok filters or attachable tails that you see in Halloween stores, but real functional tails. They were great for balance when climbing trees or jumping between branches. But as humans traded the treetops for walking upright, the tail shrank away, leaving behind only a stubby reminder, the coccyx, or tailbone, tucked at the very end of your spine. Evolution basically left us with the remnants of a product we never got to use. Today, the tailbone doesn't do much. Sure, a few muscles and ligaments still attach there, and it helps spread weight when you sit. But if surgeons remove it, nothing collapses. Every human embryo does grow a tail for a few weeks before deleting it, like an embarrassing draft tweet. Occasionally, babies are born with tiny, harmless tail-like nubs. Proof that evolution loves a glitch. Goosebump muscles. Ever get chills and see those little bumps rise on your arms? That's your erector pili muscles at work. Each tiny muscle is hooked up to a hair follicle, and when they contract, the hair stands up. The result? Goosebumps. Today, it's mostly just a neat trick your skin can do. But in our furrier ancestors, this reflex was serious business. Raising body hair trapped a layer of warm air to keep them cozy. It also made them look bigger when threatened. 
the same way a cat puffs up when it's startled. For humans, though, with barely any body hair, the effect is less intimidating. Nobody's backing away from a guy with bristly leg hair. However, these muscles aren't totally useless. Research shows they help keep hair follicles healthy and may even be involved in hair regrowth. So every goosebump you've ever had is basically your body's maintenance check on your hair follicle. Functional in theory, funny in practice. Ear muscles. Try this. Raise your eyebrows. Easy. Now, try to wiggle your ears. If you can do it, welcome to the 10 to 20% of humans who inherited this quirky talent. If not, don't worry. Your ears aren't broken. They're just showing that they have some lazy muscles. They're called the auricular muscles, tiny bands that connect your outer ear to your scalp. Long ago, they let our ancestors swivel their ears toward rustling predators or tasty prey, just like cats or dogs do today. In modern humans, they're pretty useless. Most of us just turn our whole head when we want to hear better. But the muscles are there. And fun fact, even people who can't wiggle their ears show tiny sparks of activity in these muscles when straining to listen in noisy places. It's like evolution left us with a hidden focus feature. So if you can wiggle your ears on command, congrats. You've got a unique talent the rest of us only dream about. Male nipples. Every human body starts with the same design plan in early development. Around weeks, four to six of pregnancy, nipples form before the body decides whether the baby will develop male or female traits. By the time that decision happens a week or so later, the nipples are already in place. It's like building a car, but out of order. You don't know if it's going to be a sedan or an SUV, electric or gas powered, but you've already decided what cup holders to use inside. For men, nipples don't have a major job. They almost never produce milk, though rare cases of male lactation have been documented in humans. Even more surprisingly, in certain species like fruit bats, the males actually feed their young. About 1-5% to of people even have extra nipples, usually tiny and mistaken for freckles. Harry Styles, for example, has four, proof that evolution occasionally forgets to count. So, why keep them? Because evolution is lazy about deleting harmless features. Male nipples are just the cup holders of biology. Not essential, occasionally surprising, but too minor to bother redesigning. Sinuses. Behind your cheeks, forehead, and eyes are hollow chambers called sinuses. They're basically air pockets carved into your skull, with names that sound made up. Maxillary, frontal, ethmoid, and sphenoid. Everyone's got them, but their size and shape vary wildly. A few rare folks have none at all, and still live perfectly normal lives. Scientists can't quite agree on what these spaces are for. Maybe they lighten the skull so we're not lugging around bowling ball heads. Maybe they act like acoustic chambers, giving our voices a bit more resonance. Some argue they help warm and humidify air, or even serve as crumple zones to protect the brain if you take a punch to the face. Honestly, sinuses are the Swiss army knife of maybe useful, maybe not. What we do know is that they grow throughout your life. They cause endless sinus infections, and they've basically built a reputation as squatters, big, empty rooms in your head that evolution never bothered to evict. Palmaris longus. Make a fist, then bend your wrist like you're showing off imaginary biceps. Look at the middle of your wrist. If a tendon pops up, congrats. You've got a palmaris longus. If nothing shows, also great. You're totally normal. About one in five people don't have this muscle at all, and they're not missing a thing. Grip strength, texting speed, Mario Kart performance, all perfectly intact. So why do some of us have it? In our tree-dwelling ancestors, it probably added extra grip strength for branch swinging. Today, it's about as necessary as a caps lock key. In fact, surgeons love to borrow this muscle for tendon grafts because it's basically spare parts. Even when it does show up, it's quirky. Some people have two of them reversed ones, or versions that attach in all sorts of weird ways. Evolution clearly had a just-wing-it phase when designing forearms. Ear bumps. Some people inherit grandma's eyes, and a lucky 10% inherit a random little ear bump. If you've got a tiny lump on the rim of your ear, congrats. Evolution left you a free sample called Darwin's Point. Way back, our ancestors had sharper, more elfish ears that funneled sound like nature's AirPods. That extra curve helped detect predators sneaking in the bushes. But once humans started relying more on big brains and swiveled heads, the pointy ear bonus faded away. Now it's shrunk down into a nub that does exactly nothing, doesn't boost hearing, doesn't hurt anything. 
but it has become a quirky genetic marker. Some families pass it down like a secret heirloom. Darwin thought it was living proof that our bodies are patchwork projects. And honestly, he wasn't wrong. Evolution loves a half-finished job. Vomeronasal organ. Lots of animals have an extra sensor in their noses called the vomeronasal organ. It's like a secret smell detector that picks up pheromones, chemical signals that say things like, fight me, or this tree is mine. Snakes flick their tongues to feed info straight into it. Cats use it for social sniffing. It's basically the group chat of the animal kingdom, but with smells. Humans, we got left behind. Most of us still have a tiny fold at the base of the divider between our nostrils. That thin wall of cartilage down the middle of your nose, that's the VNO. But here's the sad part. It's not hooked up to the brain. The wires are cut so it can't send signals or communicate with the brain. So while your cat is getting full chemical gossip, your nose is just sitting there clueless. We lost the feature, but evolution forgot to take the hardware from our bodies. Subclavius. Tucked quietly under your collarbone is a muscle you've probably never heard of. The subclavius. It runs from your first rib up to the underside of the clavicle, like a tiny strap no one asked for. Technically, it helps steady your collarbone. Realistically, other muscles and ligaments already do that job just fine. If the subclavius went on permanent vacation, your shoulders wouldn't even notice. But in our four-legged ancestors, this muscle likely mattered a lot more. Imagine running on all fours. Your collarbone needs to stay anchored while the rest of your body bounces around. For humans walking upright, the workload shifted elsewhere, leaving the subclavius like an intern with no assignments. Still, it's not completely irrelevant. Scientists note it may offer a little padding if the collarbone breaks, shielding blood vessels beneath. A decent backup plan, but hardly headline material. Evolution kept it on staff, but only in the most minor supporting role. If you want to learn more about strange ways your body can work, check out these other videos.